be right with y'all in a second. By the way, picking a number between 1 and 1,000, so I'm going to wait in there until there is somebody who is going to be in here, and they are going to comment on that. Also, do not mind for the people who are going to be watching it after it ends. Just keep in mind, I still have the lab coat on because I have to uh, do some testing right after this. I was, wasn't going to, but I actually need to. Let me make sure I got this on good. Looks good so far. I'll bear it back. on people so they can pick a number between one and one thousand so it's going to take a while huh. so while we wait i'm just be chilling and all that stuff, and you chill until there's somebody on here who can comment.
Oh, that's what that was on. Okay. Oh, uh, let me erase this. This is going to be a simple start for the week. Keep in mind, I didn't do a live yesterday simply because I didn't schedule it for uh, yesterday. Because on Sunday, which was, I guess this week, still confuses me if Sunday can, uh, pretty much means a new week or something. But the point is, is that I didn't schedule for yesterday simply because I made my new schedule on Sunday. Simply because since I'm the new researcher and the new uh, person doing the lectures... I'm pretty much going to decide when I get to uh, do the lectures, as long as it as it's enough for the week. So I can do it in, like a good amount of like three or four. Any less than that, then it's a little unacceptable. It's too much. Anyways, let's see if anybody's in here. Nope. Looks like nobody's in here. I, I'm not doing anything until somebody comes in for the people who are watching this after the live ends. Like, I'm not doing anything until uh, somebody comes in here and uh, gives me a number. Because I pretty much teach most stuff. The things I can really teach you the most is about uh, newer SCPs which is like what I'm doing here. Like, I guess while I do wait, I just want to, so let me just pull up like a random K class scenario. Because there's really no point in explaining K class scenarios or uh, object classifications, simply because they're pretty simple and I could go over it again, but that would just take a short amount of time from uh, the live. So, Let's look up K plus. K class scenarios.
So let's use WK. Just because I know if nobody's answering, it's the life is going to get boring. So let's use WK. WK. WK class scenario. So, WK class scenario. Most of the time, when you hear WK class scenarios, it will either refer to something that, you know, is in space, right? So, WK could mean the Earth could be placed somewhere else, or another planet could be placed somewhere else that isn't Earth. So, let's say Mars was to somehow just appear right in front of us, you know? That's a WK class. And sometimes it doesn't have to be planned. Sometimes it could be like unexpected uh, meteor showers or it could be unexpected uh, solar flares that can do a significant unex significant damage on the Earth. Basically, anything that affects the Earth that's more of like uh, something that happens in space, then that's pretty much a WK as far as what I read. Because those examples I'll be giving you where it's like the earth being misplaced or the meteor showers, that's mostly where I got that from was in the files. It said that it's basically just giving descriptions of it being something spatial. But yeah, this is just how we're going to start uh, start the day, uh, start the, excuse me, this is how we're going to start the week, you know, with uh, lectures. So I'm still going to wait until somebody can come in and give me a number. You know what? I'm going to see if I can get more people's attention so they can come in. All right, just give me a second. All right, give me a second, y'all. I'll be right back. Somebody sent me something involving the foundation, so I will be right back.
All right, something funny happened. I got a message from uh, Maze, and it was uh, involving something about uh, one of the mobile task force, right? So she, uh, uh, she or he, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know if it's a guy or dude, and never really met the person, but the person pretty much told me about uh, Edda 4, and they're called Begone Thoughts. So I just, I found that hilarious. But yeah, I told everybody, I told, I tried to tell some more people to, uh, to see if more will come. And now I'm just sitting here waiting. I'll let this live uh, this live go on as long as I need it to be, because again, we're here to learn about some SCPs. That's what the lecture is going to be, and if nobody's here, then I can't pretty much do the class. But I have to at least get something. And so uh, this is why I'm just sitting here. So pretty much for the people who are watching, like right after. This live ends. There is something interesting. Just skip through it and see if I do something. Because I could be doing something uh, better, you know, but just I'm s sticking to this to make sure I can keep up with uh, the lectures. Oh, there's one person here. It's about time. Uh, and that person left. Yep, that person left without asking. I'm not asking, but tell me like a number that they could pick. Hello. Pick a number between one and 9,000. I'll pull up the SAP and then I'll give you a lecture about it. Also, how you doing? Yeah, I know you're still here. Just uh, need somebody to pick a number between one and 9,000. Right on this board.
good. Also, 1765. Finally, I've been sitting here for like 23 minutes for somebody to come in and give me a number. All right. Let me uh search it in. 1765. Oh, so this is a file nine years ago. All right. So I am going to read this now. SCP-1765, Object Class Cat. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1765's activity is currently limited to the confines of Area 37, which is considered its effective uh, containment zone due to, uh, I'm sorry, due to SCP-1765's uh, complete infestation of Area 37, it is to be considered a type four uh, corporeal, uh, corporeally unstable territory. I, that's a bit of a new word to me. Corporeally, that's weird. And all Foundation personnel inside are to be considered uh, effectively uh, lost. A defense perimeter, uh, perimeter has been established around Area 37 according to the standard tele, uh, telemetrics uh, protocol. Attempts to breach Area 37's complex, uh, complex. Th this grammar on this thing's a little weird to me. To, uh, attempts to breach Area 37's complex have all ended with the loss of all involved mobile task force personnel and so have been discontinued until further notice. In the event that SCP-1765's activity spreads, the on-site nuclear devices stored in Area 37 may be activated with the authorization of O5 command. Due to the large volume of data produced by the activity of SCP-1765, a designated server farm has been constructed to contain uh, said server farm is to be kept isolated from all other foundation networks. I am sorry if I'm, I'm reading that a little too fast because I'm reading past the periods and stuff, so I'm not taking my time to breathe and then continue on. So this is going to be a very, very long one, which I might take that time since I'm looking over through the rest of it. It's going to take a long time for me to read this. Now, description. SCP-1765 is the collective designation for a group of three semi-corporeal entities, typically manifesting a vaguely humanoid off-white silhouettes instances of SCP-1765 display a capacity to willfully weaken the structure of reality in their immediate presence, allowing them a limited uh, but potent uh, uh, control over temp uh, temporal and physical distortions within a substantial uh, range. Instances of SCP-1765 are capable of speech speaking in three different tone voices described by listeners as feminine and seem to possess individual inconsistent personalities. SCP-1765 was first introduced to Area 37 following a successful raid by Foundation forces on, uh, hold on, Serpent's hand. Hold on, let me take a second to look at this real quick. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm reading this right. Okay, let me restart this part. SCP-1765 was first introduced at Area 37 following a successful raid by Foundation forces on a Serpent's Hand cell located in the nearby city of Redacted. Several suspects, anomalous artifacts, as well as 15 captured Serpent's Hand operatives were retrieved and brought back to Area 37. An isolated facility specializing in initial storage of such items. During pre uh, preliminary examination of three of the retrieved artifacts, a small wooden uh, loom and enamel uh, needle and a glass eye. All three instances of SCP-1765 
henceforth SCP-1765-1, SCP-1765-2, and SCP-1765-3 appeared and addressed the attendant personnel uh, researcher redacted. This conversation was recorded by the testing chamber uh, monitoring system. So what uh, I'm getting from this is that, because I feel like I recognize this uh, SCP, only thing about it is that this SCP is infectious, and I don't remember, because uh, what I'm thinking of is the SCP, hold on, take your time. Yeah, thank you. I read too, I read a little too fast, but what I'm getting from this is that, well, first off, it seems a little similar to an SCP where there's like three girls and they're all like related or something like that. And they're like, those girls, I don't know too much about them. All I know is that it's just three girls. So it's like with this, it kind of seems like that, right? Um, the only thing why it probably isn't like that is because first it said something about infectiousness, right? Basically infections. And knowing that they have dash one, dash two, and dash three. If they were uh, sisters, they would have dash A, dash B, and dash C, because that's how it works when we use the alphabet uh, for object classifications, is that if something is like closely related to uh, one SCP or if they're like siblings or whatever, then we use class A, class B, class C, class D, et cetera. But if it's like, if it comes from an SCP uh, and it's like an object or something, let's say for example, SCP-049-1-2 and dash 3, you got the zombies of 049 uh, mates, and you got the bag that he carries, and uh, there's this other one, I think it is a cane or something like that, or it could be something else. But so far as, as far as I know, that's what, you know, the classifications mean. Now, I will be right back. I need to get something in order for me to continue. The sisters, that's them. Okay, thank you. As a matter of fact, before I continue on, I want to see if there's any file images that I could find on them in order to confirm what I what I was talking about. Okay, yeah. So maybe I was a little bit wrong. When I, when I was talking about classifications, because usually when it comes to classifications, I guess it, it's a little different with some uh, SCPs. I guess what it is is that uh, the reason why there is an A, B, or C, I don't know. I might have been right. It's just it's a little different sometimes, and there's probably a little bit more to it. Because take, for example, SCP-1048, uh, the teddy bears. You have the original one that's, you know, SCP-1048, but then the ones that he made is uh, dash A, dash B, dash C, and they, uh, and he's, you know, they're the creations that the main teddy bear made, but you have uh, SCP-131, and, you know, there is no uh, the sisters. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought that was a new comment, but yeah, I guess I guess it, it makes sense because when you got the iPods, we don't know who made them because if we knew who made them, then they would be considered as you know the main SCP-131, I think. But uh, yeah, so I guess what it is is that if it's like a living being then that's where you use the classifications of, of like the alphabet and the classifications. But if it's an object, then that's when you want to use dash one, dash two, dash three, and all the other stuff. Yeah, to be fair, SCP, SCPs are extremely complicated. Yes, indeed. Even me being level four, it still gets a little bit complicated. It's like I don't really need to know that much unless if I really need to. But uh, it's like, again, it's, it is important. But yeah, it, it gets really complicated and off role play, um, 
a lot of people, it's like it's a creative commons, so a lot of people like to switch it up a little bit. Just like how I'm reading it saying Area 37, I never knew they used the classification of uh, area in the files. I, I thought they would use something like site. So this is my first time ever hearing area. I only been used to hearing sites instead of area. So every time when I see people cosplay or name their games on Roblox or something like that, they always use uh, area sometimes instead of site. And I'm just like, oh, so it's an SCP inspired game, but it's like, oh no, it's SCP, not SCP inspired, it's SCP. But back onto the role play. Let me uh, get this and read the rest. Now, I will read the begin log. So, begin log. SCP-1765-1. Greetings, estimated members of the Foundation. We come to you with auspicious news. Uh, dash 2, I. You'll be right, ple uh, we'll be right pleased with, uh, you will. I, you'll be right pleased, you will. That is, that's got to be the most broken English I've ever heard. It says, like, if you actually go read the file, that's what it says. I, you'll be right, please, you will. Dash three, hello, researcher, uh, redacted. Yeah, so this is probably the researcher who was assigned to this SCP. They're saying, what the heck? Because I don't think the researcher can understand their English or the researcher is surprised that they can talk. So dash one says, pardon, sir, I'll be with you in a moment. Uh, to SCP-1765-2, sisters, I thought we have agreed to let me do the introductions. You are embarrassing us. Dash two, oops. I am sorry. It, it's like, it, it's a recording log, so I gotta read this. It'd be better if it was just as if it was like the, it was written down instead of like an audio log. So I'm, I'm trying to take my time to read this. Oh, whoops, hey, hey, go on, we'll be quiet. Dash three, apologies. Dash one, ah, yes. As I was saying, greetings. We are pleased to finally be able to make uh, your acquaintance for we have observed your organization for quite some time. Indeed, we have observed a great many and out of them all, uh, all you stood out like a shining beacon of progress in a dark sea. Well, uh, well done. That's two. Oh, we are so very proud of you. That's three. Congratulations. The researcher working on this says, "Would you? Uh, will somebody? Uh, will someone get security? Researcher, uh, redacted grass his tongue, which uh, becomes visibly blackened and withered." So I'm guessing something happened to the researcher. I, I want to know what I means. It's just the problem is, is that um, the English on like the first thing they said was, you know, bad. It says, you'll be right, please, you will. It, it just, it didn't make sense to me. You'll be right, please, you will. Like I know I means yes, but it's just... The, the rest it, that they, they said, it was just weird. So I'm guessing the researcher was pretty much trying to say something, but then was immediately cut off. And I'm guessing it was by the SCPs. Dash one, I told you, uh, sir, I will be with you in a moment. Where was I? All right, all uh, this considered, we have decided that you and no other are worthy of receiving our assistance. It is an honor, it's, Excuse me. It's an honor, most rare. We are. Uh, we assure you. Dash two, like a bloody steak, it is. That's how uh, rare. Uh, dash three, tarts rare. All right, back onto the researcher. The researcher attempts to speak again, then falls to the floor. His uh, tongue crumbles to uh, dust. He loses cars. Uh, he loses consciousness. Dash one. Hmm. Why must people always be silly? We shall have to. Uh, we shall have to fix that later. I'll keep losing my train of thought. It. Uh, it is most infuriating. Dash two. Our help. Severity. Three. Uh, dash three. Assistance. Dash one. 
I thank you. Yes, our help. Uh, I am sorry. I'm really trying to take my time reading here. It, it gets a little hard sometimes. I uh, thank you. Yes, our help. See how mit, uh, mit, meticulous it took. Dear God, I cannot read. I apologize. These these are new words that you just never hear every day. You're saying meticulously or something like that. You keep to uh, the scientific method. We venture that we could be of most use to you if we do the same ourselves. Our abilities in that field are substantial. After all, yes, to assist you, we will conduct several useful experiments on your behalf and deliver you the data. We believe this is the beginning of a wonderful partnership. Dash two, er, I think he's out cold, love. Dash three, unwell. Dash one, oh, never mind him. They record everything. It's why we choose them, isn't it? Dash two, I, that's so. Dash three, yes. Dash one, so to those who are listening, we will begin our exper experiments immediately, since there is hardly a point in dilly dally. Now we realize that they might seem a bit harsh, but trust us, we know what uh, we know what is best for you. Dash two, sisters know best. Ha ha ha! That, that's she's literally saying he 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 like childish laughter. Dash three, always. Maybe you should have gone for 999. Yes, you, you probably should have. Oh, I actually clicked on something. Oh, comments. Yeah, I should have clicked on 999 because I'm like reading. It's like I don't do good with record uh, with the recordings because I, I have to let people know that uh, who's saying what. And but it's like if it was just like a typed in or written log, then it would have been easy. Just like uh, the one I did last time when I was talking about uh, this uh, object, I uh, can't remember, it was a gravity object, but when I was talking about that, it was a little bit easier because it, it was just an object. It wasn't a person that talked, you know? But uh, yeah. So let's see how much I have to read. I'm gonna read this pair of these, uh, one, two, Three, four, five, six. All right, so there's six paragraphs. I'm going to read them. Then the next uh, recording log is what I'm going to do next. Following this conversation, all three instances of SCP-1765 begin to move rapidly through Area 37. As SCP-1765 continued circling Area uh, 37, Several events were noticed which have been associated with reality bending phenomena. SCP-17, I mean 1765, eventually ceased this pattern, presumably because Area 37 has become unstable enough to suit the uh, parameters of their planned experiment. So hold on, let me get uh, let me take on this. Okay. It's starting to make sense now. Parameters of their planned experiment. So just like how I was reading it uh, earlier, when I thought it was infectious, I thought infections like biological infections. So you know, like a biological, uh, uh, a biohazard, right? Turns out it was a reality bending hazard. Not hazard, but basically it was a reality bending, pretty much a reality bending hazard. I don't know what the term is for that one when it comes to hazards, but just letting you know, that's what it is. Because apparently that's what the infection is and all the other stuff. But uh, let's see, where did I leave off at? At the conclusion of this process, security footage revealed that Area 37 was divided into four distinct sections and Area 37's personnel divided between them according to SCP-1765's location at the time of the event as detailed below. So pretty much just like, uh, just as I thought, they uh, split the place into, how many sections did they say? Four distinct sections. Cause I heard about this and that's why I was able to remember it and all that stuff. I was gonna say, hey, I remember there being three sisters that were able to 
split the place in like four different sections all the other stuff but anyways time to uh talk about what they talk about next section a previously area 37's mess hall storekeeping and dormitories the smallest of the sections section a was the least changed by scp-1765 notable additions are two large brass uh, vats located at the east corner of the mess hall a monitoring station connected to other sections of area 37 replacing storekeeping and a large marble sign above the entrance to the dormitories reading control group. Personnel belonging to the control group are not su uh, subjected to the experimentation taking place in our, uh, in, excuse me, in other sections of area 37. Once every five hour, uh, once every five to seven hours, the SCP, uh, I mean, excuse me, I, reading something else. Once every five to seven hours, the control group is visited by one instance of SCP-1765. During said uh, visitation, food and water are dispensed from the brass vest, and the visiting instance uh, typically addresses the control group, often encouraging them to use the monitoring station to observe any ongoing experiments. Now, uh, give me a second. I gotta check on something. I'm gonna check on that in just a few seconds again. Section B, previously area 37's outer grounds in sports uh, sport facilities. Oh, so they got some uh, sports facilities. That's kind of un unexpected, but it's like, yet again, you got to have some people to uh, be entertained. But Section B is the fulcrum of localized spatial temporal abnormality. Because of this, its size, climate, astro uh, atmospheric composition, and pressure, and temporal flow are variable and are seemingly controlled by the will of SCP-1765-1. The entity typically overseeing experimentation in Section B, according to SCP-1765-1, experimentation in Section B is meant to be delved into the effects of repetitive action perform, uh, performed under unusual conditions on the human psyche. And you see how it's easy for me to read that because it's not anybody talking, it's just typed in logs. Such as C, previously Area 37's main office complex. Such as C ex uh, exhibits similar anomalous properties to Section B, though it is associated with SCP-1765-2 rather than SCP-1765-1. Observation, as uh, well as limited input from SCP-1765-2, indicates that experiments taking place in Section C tend to focus on group dynamics and inter- Person, uh, personal relations. During extreme conditions, on average, the physical alterations of, to Section C during experimentation are more radical than those observed in Section B, while temporal alternations are significant, uh, significantly less so. So I am almost done with these progress. I have like two more to read. Now just give me a second, I'll be right back. I gotta check on something again. I was expecting something to be outside. Now, section D, previously area 37. Oh wait, hold on. Sorry. Trying to make sure I had to burn. Let me restart that. Section D, previously Area 37's high risk containment area. Section D is currently the least understood segment of the altered Area 37 complex. Okay, altered Area 37 complex. Physically, it remains virtually unchanged from its state prior to its initial infestation by SCP 1765. Tem uh, temporally, However, it appears to be 
entirely disconnected from the baseline stream of events, existing as an isolated bubble from events occurring outside of it. The temporal reality of section D, as well as any experimentation taking place within it are associated with SCP-1765-3. Due to SCP-1765-3's uh, terse speech patterns, terse? Terse uh, speech patterns and the general obscurity of the experiment it conducts. Little is currently understood about the uh, nature of experimentation taking place within Section D. Moving on. Regardless of the section and experimentation, uh, hold on, I'm sorry, let me reread that. Regardless of the section and experimentation takes place in, SCP-1765 will seek to provide the foundation with high quality video and audio feeds demo, uh, documenting it. This data is transferred to the nearest compatible foundation server through current unknown means. Footage will also often contain record notes uh, by the su uh, supervising instance of SCP-1765. Addendum. Uh, 1765-A. The following is a description of a notable of I mean of a notable experiments performed by the instances of SCP-1765. All right, so they're using dash A, so I'm kind of interested now. All right. Let's see. Because after I get done reading this, I might end it here simply because I took my sweet good old time. But now we gotta go back to the recording logs. Or, or do I? Oh, looks like it doesn't have to, it doesn't, it doesn't look like I really have to for the next one. All right, section B, state of section. For this experiment, section B mostly retained its original form other than the occasional structural shifts caused by reconstitution events as a result of experimentation. Excuse me. Personnel involved. Researcher redacted. Agent redacted. Sanitation engineer redacted. So many redacted. You know, you got to protect people's information, of course. Keep that in mind. Any names, you got to keep it, uh, you got to keep redacted unless the person is, you know, bleh. But anyways, Experiment, uh, experiment. Test subjects are brought into Area 37's sports center from an unknown location and are each given a wrench, a ruler, and brown paper uh, pad, and a ballpoint pen. Subjects are then instructed by SCP-176-1 uh, to closely examine the sports center's uh, plumbing system and to measure the exact length of each pipe and the angle in which it's, it is connected to other pipes. This process takes between 10 and 12 hours due to the size of the sports center. Before it can be completed, however, Section B begins a reconstitution event causing the plumbing system to, com uh, to be completely rearranged and rendering all work previously done uh, moot. Not sure what moot means, M-O-O, uh, M-O-O-T. Just let me know what that means because I have no idea what that means. Test subjects are then instructed to begin again. The process repeats itself 459 times before the experiment concludes. That is that. Anyways, SCP-1765-1's notes. Following yesterday's somewhat disappointing expedition to Olympus uh, Mons, my by uh, were the host rude. I have decided to attempt something less taxing on the on on my test subjects, which are thus far proving to be both physically unimpressive and morally lacking. This simple examination of repeating sensory input and the manner in which it can be connected to other primal reactions to the point of overload should prove both useful to you and within my test subjects rather than uh, limited uh, compatibility. Finally, a proof that 
even if we try to learn from experience, that attempt is ultimately pointless since one uh, once life passes you uh, by, you will just have to learn everything all over again. That's useful knowledge. Children, I do hope you are paying attention. So I wonder what the heck is going on here. There's nothing worse than like reality warping SCPs because they can pretty much do whatever the heck they want. So that's some pretty scary uh, stuff. Almost cussed, but you know, moving on. Let's see. Have section C, section D. So pretty much, I have two uh, two more sections to uh, to read. Section C, state of uh, of section. For this experiment, section C took the appearance of a football stadium with uh, test subjects appearing around the fifty yard line. Notably, the goal. Uh, posts have been removed and replaced with concrete bunkers. So wait, the, the football field, was it just taking out, uh, taking out uh, another football field or was it in there? Because I'm a little bit confused now. Subject to debate, dispute, or uncertainty. So that I'm guessing that's what moot means. So hold on, let me go back to that and read it. Let me see if I can find it anywhere. I'll look at it some other time, but I, I do have to move on. Personnel involved. The former members of Mobile Task Force IOTA 6, Canvas Cats, 10 of, of the 15 captive, oh, 10 of the 15 captive Serpent's Hand operatives. So I'm get, I'm guessing they're using uh, the Serpent's Hand oper uh, uh, operatives as uh, Class D, since, you know, they pretty much did their crimes. They are using them as Class D. Anyway... Experiment. The experiment took place in two phases. On the first phase, subjects were divided into two teams, both consisting of a mix of mobile task force personnel and Serpent's Hand operatives. Both groups were then instructed by SCP-1765-2 to head to the bunkers located at the ends of the field. While running to, uh, to these positions, several hooded figures appeared on the stadium's uh, bleachers and began bombarding the test subjects with fast moving fiery projectiles. Additionally, three meters tall curved platforms began rising from the ground, requiring test subjects to exercise teamwork in order to bypass them. Due to the mixed composition of the team's uh, test subjects were unable to over overcome the platforms in time and both teams were incinerated by the projectiles before reaching the bunkers. 30 seconds following this, the second phase of the experimentation uh, of the experiment began with the same group of test subjects again, appearing near the 50 yard line unharmed. Subjects were, wait, hold on. Experiment again with the same group of test subjects. Oh, so did they like bring them back to life or something like that? Yeah, whatever. Very near the 50 yard line unharmed. Subjects were again divided into two groups, one consisting only of NTF personnel and the other um, of Serpent's hand operatives. So, uh, test subjects were again instructed to reach the bunkers. Test proce uh, proceeded as previously record uh, or recorded, my bad, with both teams now able to surpass the raised platforms and reach the bunkers. At this moment, however, the doors to the bunkers closed shut and two previously unseen pairs of sizable uh, metal hammers descended from an unknown origin, uh, origin spot, crushing both teams to death. That's one way to go out that I wish I didn't have to go out, which is being crushed. It, uh, there's a lot of ways, you know, suffocation, drowning, being crushed. That's just, that's just not the way to go. All right, SCP-1765-2 notes. I saw the kitties were having a bad time with the double date thing we did. So I thought to myself, smile kitties, today don't go for a romance no more. It's too slow for them. They want excitement and, and sweat and explosions in sports. So I called a few old friends of mine and they were happy to help. Weren't they just, what was the name of the tall one with the robes? 
Madam Maven, or was it John? But I can't uh, can't remember. But I don't. Uh, but I know he just loves the football. Uh, the football. He he he. And if she wrote this down, then you know she's most definitely insane if she's willing to write down he he he. Anyways. We sure had a grand uh, old time, even with the burning and the crushing and and all. Oh, I think I'm forgetting something. Oh, the test. This was uh, this was this was a test. Yeah. Um. See, it goes to show you that no matter who you're uh who you're with, you eventually get crushed by huge metal hammers smashing down from the sky. Hmm. No, that can't be right. Uh, I got it. Doesn't matter how much you uh, prepare and uh, who's with you. Sooner or later, fate's going to catch up with you. Heh <laughs> heh. Yes, this is uh, this I like. This sounds just peachy. A lesson to be learned, my lads. A lesson to be learned. So I've already considered that this is taking an angle. Uh, this this is taking place in English. Uh, uh, excuse me. I'm already considering that this is happening in England because they said I and they said uh they say lads. That's something you would mostly hear uh people say in England is like uh let's go lads or something like that. But yeah, section D, this one's gonna be short. Now, section D, state of section. Physically, Section D remained unchanged from its original state. Personnel involved. Site director uh, redacted. Now, that's bad. Okay, that's some Looney Tunes. That's exactly what I'm saying. And this is coming from uh, SCP-176-2. Uh, and as far as I know, she's supposed to be like the goofy one. Just like how she made that comment talking about uh, the bloody steak or something like that, right? So she's apparently the goofy one. So, site director direct, uh, redacted. Experiment. Site direct, uh, excuse me. Experiment. Site director redacted enters Area 37's main containment vault. At the center of the vault, a table, likely taken from the mess hall, is placed. On the table are two uh, one layer vats of redacted brand ice. Ice cream? Okay. Let me re uh, let me reread that. On the table are two one uh, liters of vast of liters vast of redacted brand ice cream. Gosh darn it! I am sorry. That's hard for me to read. I'm guessing it's redacted so they don't get in trouble with uh, using the company name. But anyways, brand ice cream. One pistachio flavored, the other passion fruit flavored. Site director redacted is instructed by SCP-1765-3 to choose. Site director redacted then chooses the pistachio flavored ice cream and leaves the room. At this point, footage momentarily blurs and site director redacted returns to the room in which the unchosen vat of ice cream was replaced by a different one. This one, a uh, chocolate flavor. He is again instructed to choose. This time, uh... I'm sorry, this time picking the chocolate flavored ice cream. That dude deserves to die. I'm joking. But I I don't see why people like chocolate flavored ice cream. Like I can get chocolate bars, all that stuff, but when it comes to like ice cream or cake, then you're 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 insane. You're mentally insane. Anyways, the process repeats itself with each unpicked vat replaced by one of a different flavor. At the time of the writing of this document, the foundation has received uh, the foundation has received over 10,000 hours of footage from this experiment. 10,000 hours? Dang. With analysis identifying over uh, 200,000 different flavors of ice cream, including meerkat marshmallow madness, tranquility, uh, that shoe that you always liked, God's wrath, and redacted. I'm guessing the name is called redacted. Because it literally says redacted, like it isn't redacted, it's just called redacted. Or I'm guessing they just typed that in. That's just weird. All evidence suggests that this experiment is still ongoing. SCP-1765-3's notes. Note is found at the beginning of the 
1,356 uh, hour of footage delicious. Dear God, if it's the same site director, uh, Scotland too. Yeah, I thought somewhere else they uh, used the phrase uh, lad as well. I was thinking Ireland, but I, I wasn't thinking of Scotland, but it, I guess it makes sense. But um, yeah, just imagine being a site director who was like pretty much the manager of the site or area, only to be forced to eat multiple different flavored ice creams. I mean, he gets to, he gets to try different flavors. Only problem is, is that uh, he will get full, he will get fat, unless they make, unless they do some anomalous stuff to the point where they don't make him fat or whatever. But it would be irritating though, because uh, apparently if you don't do what they want you to do, then they, you know, they, bleh, you're, uh, you in like, or, just they pretty much do anything that in in order to like keep you do, uh, going or whatever. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I want to want to I want to I wouldn't want to be in that uh, psych director's position because uh, yeah, like I like foods, but I don't want to keep eating and then being forced to eat it. Not only that, it does seem cool to try different flavors though that probably doesn't even exist yet. Because from what I've heard, it there's some of them that don't exist, some of them are good and some of them are not good, just like that one I just read where it says that one shoe you taste or something like that. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's all to conclude because I'm pretty much done here. That's a long SCP to read and it was very interesting because I heard about these SCPs but I only knew two things. They were sisters and they could uh, and they did something to a site and that was about it. So yeah, I pretty much have to go. This is pretty much the lecture, not lecture, but pretty much the story to, uh, telling. It was gonna be a lecture so we can learn about it. I guess what we could uh, say is that from what we've learned is that these are three SCPs that were taken from the serpent's hand uh, due to a raid. And then what happened next was that they, uh, the anomalies took over a site. So pretty much they were catter, so they were pretty much uncontrollable. But they took over a site, turned it to four different pieces and did their own experiment. So they pretty much just kicked the foundation out and try to do their job, but in their own way. Pretty much like how companies try to take uh, uh, other creations, like how Disney does with Marvel or, uh, excuse me, or how Netflix does with other stuff. Pretty much take something good and then turn it into something in, into your own imagination only for it to fail. Anyways, that's uh, pretty much what I've gathered from it. Apparently, if you uh, go into the reality, uh, uh, wherever the what do you want to call it, reality infection or reality hazards, then you pretty much pretty much something bad happens to you, and you might be trapped in there. Is probably what the issue is. I don't know. Well, hey, well, at least it's uh, beats being incinerated or crushed. Exactly, like, because like for me, I'm trying to lose weight here. So, because I'm, I'm kind of fat, like I'm not over, like over overweight or obese or anything like that, but it's like I'm trying to lose weight. So, doing that just kind of just ruins the whole thing. But hey, I tried new different flavors. Some might be good, some might be bad, some might taste like sweat, some might taste like balls. Hey, first time for everything, right? <laughs> I'm joking. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. But yeah, I do have to uh, end this, and uh, I have to continue with the next test that I have to do right after this. So I guess I'll catch you later, either tomorrow, which is going to be Wednesday, either uh, just at least either by Friday, like either before Friday or by Friday. I just need to at least get my three days in of the week. So I guess I'll see you later. Ending broadcast.